Welcome back to another JROC video. So, what we have, as you've seen by the clips there, we've got the van finally sign written. So this is looking really good. The guys down at Dallas Designs, so, well, we went through the designs for the last sort of couple of months, and they've been working on it, you know, <laughs> bearing with all of my my sort of pickiness with design. And I really think we got it, we got it right with the orange and the green. It's just something that is really working well. So I really like it, really happy with that. And it's a bit of a bold, it looks like you know, the van that's around here, so it can only help. So that's the first thing there is obviously the design of the van. What again, I am really happy with. It's, uh, yeah, it really sticks out. And I've had compliments on it already, which is always nice. But for today, what we're gonna get onto is the pruning of this apple tree. Uh, what is, as you'll notice, we had the shed taken down yesterday that was here, that was free to a good home. So now that that's gone, I was actually going to fall this because I believe we've got canker running through through the apple tree here. What You can kind of see it with all the splits that run through, through the tree, kind of runs all the way up here and into the centre there. So what I'm going to do is before actually doing something as drastic as that and getting rid of it i'm going to give it a super hard prune and basically see how it comes back next year and see if it does any better so the thoughts with this apple tree is because it's planted so close to that fence and i'm going to be renovating this whole garden and mowing up and down here i don't want anything overhanging so what i'm going to do is i'm going to basically thin this out really short sorry thin it out bring the height down so it's really short, probably about fence height. And then I'm gonna take everything back as far as I can, almost, probably even take out this central stem here and basically just grow the fruit that's into the border and sort of really bring it down. Look, I don't need to harvest a lot of apples. I'm not too fussed on it, that, to be honest with you in this, especially this location. So the plan is to get it so it's, it's less of a nuisance. And from there, we'll see how it works out. But bear with us and we're going to go through that. Tools for the job then. I've got a set of secateurs, silky saw. To be honest, I'll be doing open, nearly all the work with this. But Seika has sent out, you might have seen this on Country Cottage Gardener's channel. They have sent out this little mini chainsaw. You get two 18 volt batteries that are one and a half amps each. To be fair, they seem to work okay, uh, last all right. As you can see, I have had a bit of usage with it already. Within this item, so they've sent this out for me to use and basically to show, and this is probably about as good as I can show you. Um, there's a few things I don't like about it, to be honest, and there's several that's okay as well. So the grip, it's rubberized, it feels really nice in the hand, really comfortable. You kind of got this um, finger protector here, just on this other side. Again, stable enough, just held in by this one screw up top. You've got a safety mechanism, which is this pre uh, this button on the side that needs to be depressed in order for the trigger to go. If not, it's locked in. So with that, you've also got your stopper at the top and you've got your chain just on as so. This is a manually lubricated chainsaw. You get this little bottle with it and yeah, you just lubricate it yourself before you get going. The batteries slip in really easy at the bottom here like so, and as you see, nothing works, depress the lever, off you go. So my only, I've used this, like I say, a little bit before. My only issue, what I'll show you, is the cut quality on it isn't very neat. So what I'm gonna do here is on the cuts I do, I'm gonna do a slightly further out, and you'll notice that when I do them, the left's pretty messy cuts, and that's with a sharp chain and all the rest of it and then I'm probably going to finish it off with a saw, which is a bit neater. But we'll get into it, and you'll see how it works. So as you can see here, it really sort of rips at it. That's the sort of finish you get, and I've, I've done this on plenty of branches on different types of growth, and it all seems to be the same result. This is kind of what you get. And so if it's something 
like cutting a brush, then yeah, fantastic. Something like this where you want to leave a really nice edge and it's ripping, roughly see it up there, it's ripping back the bark a little bit. I would not want to be leaving that as the final cut just above the collar. So it is a fantastic tool. I'll show you what I want to use it for, but on something like final prunes, I would not want to use this tool at all. So where I do think that this tool is going to come in very handy is when you want to put things through a chipper, anyone that uses chippers, and you've got something like this, what is, you know, that isn't going to go in because the stem comes out at basically a 90 degree angle, it's just not going to work. I would use this tool for basically separating that in quick time and, you know, it'll be a lot quicker putting things through the chipper. You know, a lot easier. I don't care about the finish on it because it's just about to get chipped up anyway. But basically, that is the Seca 18 volt chainsaw handheld. Pretty good machine, and I think it will be, you know, it's powerful enough. I have had a few stoppages with thicker bits. If you tried to go through something, basically half, half the thickness of the trunk here, it would struggle and it cuts through, cuts out halfway through. But other than that, like I say, a good tool, handy to have, but I wouldn't be using it for your final cuts if you're trying to do some sort of form of pruning. These are like I was going to say, they're going to go through the chipper, so I'm just going to break it down slowly. I want to be taking it all the way back into the border, and that way it should be a whole lot easier when it comes to mowing. I'm just going to walk around, around this tree like so, taking off anything that's going to be a hindrance. And I'm going to more or less take off anything that is drooping straight through the centre. But at the moment I just need to work my way back in. To be fair, it has just went through that, no problem at all. So, it's powerful enough, that isn't the issue. The issue is the finish of cut, which I'll show you. So as you can see, I've now got a framework for how the tree's gonna be, just about. This one is actually gonna come in a little bit further but then I'm gonna actually thin up the, the tree, remove anything crossing, and leave the buds literally just the ones that I want. Usually when you come woods to do a tree, well, fruit tree, mainly apple tree, in this case, prune, what you're gonna be doing is taking away any crossing, rubbing, dying, diseased, damaged branches, doing all that first, and then you'll see what you're left with. In this case, because I can see very obviously what's going wrong with it, I've decided to sort of create a frame first, see what, I'm kind of left with shape wise and then I can do all the finer stuff after that. This is going to be a very hard prune. What I'm going to find is that I'll get a lot of vigorous growth next year because I've definitely removed, I would say nearly, well, more than 50% of the tree already. So you shouldn't really do that much. I believe it's somewhere around a third. That is sort of a healthy amount to do each season. So I'll do it now. I'll go again and do like a maintenance prune in the summer and then we'll see what we're left with. But now just to tidy things up.
Right, so that is us pruned up. But it's so it's taken all the way back. So now you'd be able to get up and down here, no problem at all. If I keep everything growing up that side and then we're just keeping a face to it. My only issue is I believe, I mean, I've, it's definitely got disease, quite a bit of disease. So that's a fungi disease there, which isn't very fun. And then I believe that mixed with sort of your abrasions here and sort of rotten bark or crumbling bark, I believe is what's called canker. Now I might be wrong. See, like that branch is really bad. So really, I could probably lose all of this, to be honest. All this in here i mean it seems pretty far gone so there's a good chance that after i see how this goes through summer and if the fruit's any better i might even use a fungicide on it but there's a chance that the whole thing might be coming down just because of that disease there yeah i say if it is canker it's not a very nice disease to have but yeah if you know anything more about this then let me know because i'm not too clued up on it to be honest So that's it then, Forest Master FM 14 double D, finishing it off. Chipped it all up nicely, can't complain. Although we are getting some strings as well, so I think it's about time that I change the blades over. But, fully done, that's it down. God, another step closer to getting this garden to a base level before I renovate it. Looking forward to that, doesn't help with this girl. Just a little check over on the lawn, we've now got one, two, three, four, five. We've got quite a few dig patches. So it's going to be a bit of a battle, whatever we do, to keep her off of it. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this week's video. And yeah, we'll see you next time.